So here we go. We've already seen one upset earlier today with BYU out of the WCC as well, taking down a higher seed. Belmont trying to do the same, coming in with a 20 and 5 record. Winners of 14 of their last 15. Both of these teams red hot entering the NCAA Women's Championship. We're glad that you're with us today. This is the starting five for Gonzaga. It's brought to you by Capital One. Very balanced scoring attack. Four out of the five seniors, the point guard, Kaylee Trong, the youngest in the bunch. And that's just an excellent five. Looking like a senior for the first basket. Absolutely. If you haven't watched Gonzaga play, very unselfish. They share the ball so well. It was Townsend with the first basket. Here's the Capital One starting five for Belmont. We mentioned before how Wells goes for 18 a game. Conley Chin also scores nearly 13 tonight. There's Wells. First look strong. Well, we've got some contrasting styles here today. We talked about the veteran ball club of Gonzaga against the really young, inexperienced team of Belmont. But the one common denominator of these, both these teams, consistently they have won year in and year out. Hats off to both of these head coaches and the programs that they have established. Pass knocked away by Jones. Uh, you're right on, Lisa Fortier now in her seventh season as the head coach. Six times she's guided Gonzaga to the top of the WCC in her seven years. Meanwhile, Belmont, five straight NCAA tournament appearances. So do we get the jump ball? It's a shot clock violation is the ruling. There's Lisa's counterpart, that's Bart Brooks. 11 years learning from the great Doug Bruno. He took the head job here in 2017. 99 wins in 124 tries. Uh, and what stands out to you then about this Belmont style of play under Coach Brooks? Well, that it's evolved. And through recruiting, it's evolved. They're a much more defensive-minded team, turning teams over this year. And a lot, big part of that is Destiny Wells and Tootie Jones, number zero. They can disrupt defensively, and those two can get out and run in transition. And offense with plenty of ball movement, floor spacing, and a lot of movement away from the ball. Wells with her first bucket. I told you, this young lady does not act like a freshman. And they've got her listed at 5'6", which I will be shocked if this young lady is more than 5'4", but I got to tell you, she plays like a giant. <laughs> plays like a senior, too, at times. That's Leanne Worth, Jen's sister, an identical twin with the latest basket. Well, a surplus you're just... of... Sorry, Kevin, I was going to say, you're going to see a lot of ball movement by both of these ball clubs just looking and hunting for the best shot possible. In transition, it's Leanne Worth once again. And I asked Bart Brooks, from an offensive philosophy perspective, what are you looking for? He said, we're hunting for layups or threes. He said, I don't want to tell them not to take the mid-range because they're so good at it. He said, but we want to make some threes today. They came into today's game averaging nine, I'm sorry, eight, yeah, no, nine made threes a game. That's good for 20th in the nation. The best offense in the OVC and a very efficient offense at that. Here's Wells after the turnover. Or pardon, Tootie Jones out of bounds. And it was Townsend who was on the end line. Well, I said to look out for Destiny Wells. They're just sizing up the defender and knocks it down from deep. And then Gonzaga answers. Point guard to Worth. Leanne Worth, that is, in transition. This is Wells twisting along the baseline, has a couple of free throws. Double team doesn't affect her. 
She just gets right by it, gets the rib, draws the foul. You see two players, and as soon as the post leaves, she attacks that open lane. I mean, just great court vision and patience by the freshman. And this terrific season, undoubtedly, it got her the OVC Freshman of the Year honor. And you could have made a case that she was the conference's player of the year, made the all-first team. And not just the scoring, too. Better than four assists a game. Well, Kevin, I, I reached out to a coach in the OVC just to get their perspective on Belmont. And just a quick response was, we'll talk later, but you just need to know one name, Destiny Wells. And she was absolutely <laughs> right. This young lady has not disappointed in any facet because she's not one-dimensional. It's not just about her scoring. She defends. She's a table setter for this team. And as we saw in the OVC championship, she rises to the occasion. She's got all five of Belmont's points in the first few minutes. It's a red-hot Bruins team. They've won 10 straight and 14 of their last 15. When you see on the out-of-bounds play, Belmont set up in that 2-3 matchup. Great ball movement by Gonzaga to knock down that three by Kaylee Trump. A silky smooth stroke, and the sophomore from Houston has her first basket. Eighteen footer, that's a swish. Madison Bartley off the bench. I think it's going to be interesting to watch just the post play in this game because Gonzaga is so undersized. We to I told you, Gonzaga's very selfless. They move the ball, they share the ball inside to out, skip to Trong in the corner. And Kevin, four made buckets for Gonzaga to this point in the game on four assists. So Wells to the bench. Back to Trong. Down and out. Conley Chin with the drive and kick. Yeah, I feel like Chin's probably that X factor for Belmont because she could just create mismatches. Townsend. But when I think about the glue player for Gonzaga, it is Jill Townsend in a nutshell. I just love this young lady's toughness. Obviously, she can score, but I just feel like she adds the grit to this Gonzaga ball club. Gonzaga by four, past the midway mark of the first quarter. Sweeping jump hook, and junior Matty Cook was offline. So now the Trong sisters on the floor. Kaylin Trong is number 14. Another basket for Townsend. Just so measured and smart. Just read the defense, saw the C's part defensively, and took it all the way to the rim. Well, this Gonzaga offense, tops of the WCC, scored more than 71 points per game. One of the top 15 most efficient offenses in the country. Everything looks smooth on that end for the Bulldogs. Late in the shot clock. Cook wants three. Chin had it, and it's a foul on the loose ball. But Jill Townsend is ready for postseason. Jab step, hesitation, kisses it off the glass. Gonzaga up six. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Gonzaga WCC champs again. Throw it back to March 9th. The game winner with six tenths of a second in the WCC title game. It was Jill Townsend. And then, yeah, escape the celebration. They got to punch their ticket 
to the NCAA Women's Championship and, and down one. You know, I, those buzzer beaters where you got to make it or you lose it just adds an extra clutch factor. Well, and there's a lot more to that story. Five players the night before were sick, something they had eaten. And Jill Townsend played sparingly in that game. That was the only bucket the senior made in the championship game. But what a bucket it was for Gonzaga. And, and explains the low scoring game. Boy, look how quickly Destiny Wells gets to the rim. That's the superstar freshman for Belmont. Well, I think you also have to take it even further when you talk about Jill Townsend that two years ago, she was injured in the conference tournament and missed the NCAA tournament. So, so much emotion for Jill Townsend to go into today's game to finally make it back to the NCAA tournament after last playing her freshman year. Gonzaga's third WCC tournament title under 48. A foul on the entry pass, and it is Townsend who gets whistled for the personal. Hey, Kevin, I don't know if I said this yet, but you got to watch Destiny Wells there. Just the body control and the presence to stay in bound with the bounce and then just shake and bake to get to the rim for two. There is speed and quickness, and then there is that. It was an excellent move. And Wells with seven of Belmont's nine. Trong left wide open, and that's Kalen Trong for three. You think there's any competition between the two sisters? Anything you can do, I can do better, because Kaylin knocks it down this time. Not just the Trong sisters, the identical twins. We have a surplus of identical twins on Gonzaga's roster. Jen and Leanne Worth as well. You know, Kevin, sometimes coaches will recruit one sibling to get another sibling who might be better. That's not the case with these two sets of sisters. All four of these young ladies contribute in a major way for Gonzaga's program, defensively, offensively, you name it. The only difference, one set are post players, or I should say much taller because they definitely have guard skills, and the Trong sisters primarily play that point position. The Worth sisters out of Mesa, Arizona, the Trong sisters out of Houston, here they are in Texas for the NCAA Women's Championship. Worth tried to bank it off the window. It stays here. New 20-second shot clock for Gonzaga. And, Kevin, I, I love the story that the Worth sisters were the host for the Trong sisters on their official visit. I mean, what better way to sell a program than sisters to sisters? Abby O'Connor for three. This is where I feel like Gonzaga is just so dangerous. They can beat you in a variety of ways, but they can also beat you with a variety of players. So unselfish. I'm not going to be surprised if every player hits the floor today gets points on the board because that's how they work the ball around. I don't think they could have asked for a better first quarter. Five different players have scored. Eight of ten from the floor. Wells gets the screen from Cam Browning. Wells breaking down her defender, knocked away, stays here, six to shoot. And that's where well. you just see the length advantage of Gonzaga there to get the block on Wells. McKinney left alone and hits. <laughs> So I talk a lot about Destiny Wells, but I got to say probably that unsung hero of this Belmont team has been Jamalyn Kenny, just selfless, sharing the minutes, the shots. And Bart Brooks told us that Wells has made uh, Kenny a better player, just like Kenny has made Wells a better player this season. Gonzaga's doing such a good job closing up those dribble penetration lanes of Belmont.
Strong drive beyond the arc, three in the air. That bounces out. Jen Worth fouled on the way up. First free throws for Gonzaga coming. NIT continues on Thursday. Quarterfinal action features Mississippi State and Richmond. 6 Eastern tip time on ESPN2. There's the numbers for Worth. Nearly 13 points per game. A little more than eight rebounds. And the value goes beyond that. A terrific defender as well. Well, at least Fourier said the development of Worth has really been on the glass. That she has always been great offensively, has been solid, but now that she's taken ownership on the glass, this is where her game is just skyrocketed in terms of her value for the program. Gonzaga doubling up Belmont in the first quarter. Wells down the lane. Left hand, no. A foul assessed to Leanne Worth on the rebound. Well, Wells is able to get to the rim, just can't finish. And Worth, great call by the official. She does use that arm to displace Belmont trying to get that rebound. Big possession for Belmont. Can it cut it back to single digits? Seven seconds. Wells hesitates on the bounce. Layup is down. Destiny Wells with 11 of Belmont's 13 points. A valiant effort, though. Christy Gonzaga, 9 of 12 shooting from the field. They dropped 22 in the first quarter. The Bulldogs ahead by nine. Gonzaga playing at its 12th N uh, NCAA Women's Championship in the last 14 years. A nine-point advantage over the 12th seed, the Belmont Bruins, after one quarter. And Belmont has one of the highest-scoring freshmen in the nation in Destiny Wells. And Christy, she put on a show, nine of her team's 13 points in that first quarter. What stood out? Well, that she was just not phased by the big stage whatsoever. It's what she's done all season long. And Kevin, I went deep diving on Destiny Wells to figure out how this young lady scores. To this point in the season, 40% of her points have come from screen on the balls. 20% in transition. Only 16% spot up. I mean, that just tells you how active this young lady has been. And I mean, the bottom line is there's some great coaches in the OVC. They know it. They've scouted her. Yet this young lady has still been able to put the points up night in and night out. And not just the volume of scoring. Now with 11, she's having a nearly, in a lot of ways, the standard 50, 40, 90 is elite status. Nearly 50% from the field shooting. She's better than 40% from deep, 86% from the line. So not just a volume score, that is incredibly efficient numbers. Well, and efi especially efficient for a freshman. I mean, that's what's really remarkable to me, just her decision-making, considering this is truly her first season, which hadn't even been a full season because of COVID and because Belmont also had a month-long shutdown. Looking for back-to-back -back baskets on this side. To Tootie Jones. No. Belmont, one of six from deep. Uh, two players on the floor. Lully was on it, then got tied up. Gonzaga ball. You think this game doesn't mean something to these players? They are getting on the floor. They realize every loose ball matters. Now you referenced this in our conversation with Bart Brooks a couple of days ago. We know that the standard of success for Gonzaga, but... It, what did you say? It feels like Belmont is the UConn of the mid-major level. And, and honestly, I use that term because it's just the consistency. Everyone talks about how UConn's been bad for basketball because all they do is win. Well, 
when you look at what Belmont has done, at least in the last six, six years, it's been remarkable. And honestly, when you're building a program, it's easy to come in maybe year one and win. It's to sustain that that is so hard. And that's why I just think what Bart Brooks has done at Belmont is just truly, truly remarkable. Five straight tournaments. They're still looking for their first tournament win. A lot of action. It's Jones. The kick out, two to shoot, deep three. Kenny! Oh! Belmont's so happy that they played on Monday instead of Sunday because you know what? The bank is open. <laughs> Second triple for Belmont. Bounce pass, entry feed, Towson got caught underneath the rim. Now Jones away with it. No numbers. It's a 7-0 run for Belmont to start the second quarter. Wells had a little opening. And another rebound down to Worth. Well, that's something I'm just really eager to see as this game continues. Can, can, can Belmont try to keep it close on the glass? Because this is, in, in Gonzaga, one of the top rebounding teams in the country. Foul on the floor. Well, desperation times call for extraordinary measures. Here, Kenny banks it off the glass for three as the shot clock was going down. Again, you see Belmont setting that 2-3 matchup on the out-of-bounds defense. That one popped out for Jen Worth. Townsend fights over the screen. Move it. Space. You just feel like Belmont's got to be able to get Conley Chin some touches. No points to this point in the game. And there she is. 10-0 run for Belmont. Bouncing, hits the cutter. Melody kept it. Offline and Jones with the rebound. That's a terrific defensive possession. Kevin, it almost seems like Belmont has sped Gonzaga up on the offensive end right now. All momentum going to Belmont on both ends of the floor right now. Mark Brooks said, my team can't play too fast or too fearless for me. This is the pace he likes. Kenny nails another. The Belmont run is 13 zip. Gonzaga needs timeout. Kenny nails it. Well, Belmont is back in this game in a big way because they're making buckets. The freshman, Destiny Wells, gets us started with the jumper. Then Kenny from three. Conley Chin from three. And then Kenny's not done yet. Big three to force Gonzaga into a timeout. A flurry of big shots. And the OVC champs, the Belmont Bruins, on a 13-0 run. And this is the M.O. of this team. They average nearly nine threes made per game, 35% from deep as a team. Well, and Bart Brooks said to us, we've got to be able to make some threes to stay in this game. And boy, was the head coach right. Now Townsend off the screen. Leanne Worth with the offensive rebound. The wise tap. From Kaylin Trong. This is her sister. Kaylee pulls up and hits it in the lane. 
Second chance points have been so big for Gonzaga this season. But to this point in the game, it's been Belmont that has the upper advantage on the offensive glass. Near turnover, Worth knocked it away. It's a tie-up. That possession arrow is going to give the basketball to Gonzaga. There's that length and reach. It takes such mental discipline to face a defense like Gonzaga because they just shrink the court on you because of their length. And we just saw worse length disrupt Belmont. So over the course of the game, I'm wondering how Belmont will be able to withstand just this constant defensive pressure of Gonzaga. And I don't mean in your face defensive pressure. I mean being fundamentally sound. Such a veteran team. All those seniors in the starting lineup. It's a Gonzaga team that's won 22 of its last 23. Belmont basketball after another tie-up. I mean, think about it. This program has lost once in three and a half months. And honestly, if you watch that WCC championship, until that final bucket, you thought that was going to be their first loss. But this team has found a way to win. So resilient. The fifth Belmont three. And the first from Tootie Jones. The Bruins now five of ten from outside. Kalen Trong lost it. Here's Wells. On the attack, switches hands, lays it up. Yes. And this is what Belmont needed to do, create some offense from their defense. That time, Wells converts that turnover into two easy points. Maybe another? Oh, Gonzaga all out of sorts. Wells' defense sometimes gets overlooked because of Tootie Jones leads the team in steals. But here, right place, right time. And the freshman knows what to do in transition. Crossover to go to the other side of the rim to avoid the shot-blocking skill of Worth. Thirteen first-half points for Wells. And to the point you alluded to, six steals already for Belmont. Chin from up top, that's short. Belmont, 14th of the nation, 11 steals a game. That's their average. 3.15 to go, first half. Worth, jab, drive, spin. Gets it back, banks it in. Great persistence by Worth. Stays with the miss, get that offensive rebound, and gets to go back in. And that's the player of the year's first basket. Or make it first field goal. Oh, great find, Cam Browning. Well, and this is where I, coming into today, I thought Belmont was so good offensively. Just screen on the ball offense. They were so disciplined. They know how to attack based on how the defensive reads it. But I really was wondering if they could get anything off of that based on the length of the Zags. And honestly, to this point, or I should say during this run, they're getting whatever they want offensively. Good no call there. And Worth sticks the jumper. Gonzaga team just unflappable. They're just steady. There's no panic. They just stay to, true to who they are. And, and I got to say it, how much confidence they must have gained from that WCC championship, going through all the adversity that they did to still find a way to win. Boy, exceptional second quarter for Belmont. Now 8 of 11 from the floor. That's 73%. It's the 5-12 matchup of the Mercado region, NCAA Women's Championship. The winner advances to face Indiana, the four seed. She can distribute too, Christy. Well, we've talked about well scoring, so now let's just see some of the passing there. The no look 
thread the needle behind the defender to get it to her teammate for the wide open looks. That's a point guard. I'm, I'm sorry, that is a scoring point guard for you. And Browning has cashed in on two big makes this quarter. I like this insertion of Yvonne Ejim into the game for Gonzaga. She was the difference maker in their last game, last win over BYU. Just really athletic and active on the glass. Kempton, no, and there she is. Third chance. Tie up. Boy, and Ejim was there for the offensive board, just couldn't put it back. Arkansas upended our second upset of the day. Highlights analysis of that one coming up on the AT&T 5G uh, at the half. BYU, the other upset win over number six Rutgers. There's Egypt. Well, they go right back to her wise move. Again, a very disciplined Gonzaga team. They just will pick you apart, look for the weakness, and go for that high percentage look. Christy Belmont outscoring Gonzaga 20 to 8 in the second quarter. 40 seconds Gonzaga, to go until half. Go ahead, sorry. sorry. Kevin, what's, if you're Gonzaga, you're static. I mean, because you're only down three. One ruled to be Gonzaga ball with 12 seconds on the timer. Bart Brooks arguing it was tip. Tron to inbound. Kempton got it. Great execution on the out of bounds play for that high percentage look. Shot clock off, a one point game. Nearing halftime. Wells, not that time. Two seconds. One second. Belmont with a furious rally in the second quarter. And they take a one-point lead over the five-seed Gonzaga. 13-3 and three for Wells, the OVC Freshman of the Year. Now to Maria, Andy, and Rebecca in the studio. This is the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. In San Marcos, Strahan Arena, University Event Center on Texas State's campus. The 5-12 battle in the Mercado region. It's Belmont looking for its first ever tournament win. One point lead with Christy thomas Cuddy, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. And it was Destiny Wells who showed everybody all about her playmaking abilities in that first half. Well, the freshman is playing so much bigger than her stature and so much older and wiser than her age. She's just been phenomenal in that first half. Led the team with 13 points. It's been a steady presence for Belmont. She's done it off the bounce. She's done it against taller players. She's done it by setting her teammates up. Such the playmaker from that point guard position. Wells has been spectacular in all facets of the game, offensively as well as defensively getting her team the one-point lead at halftime. And then for Gonzaga, they started off so well, moving the ball. This is a very selfless team. When they could get ball reversal, they got the high percentage looks, layups, wide open looks from three. That was their best offense. But down the stretch in that second quarter, they got sped up. If they can just get back to true Gonzaga basketball, they should be okay here in the second half. And Gonzaga, a team that's won 22 of its last 23 games. And you see the numbers, it shot very well from the field, but the eight turnovers, minus five in that category, and Christy Belmont turned those eight turnovers into 13 points. Well, that was key for Belmont. They've got to be able to make some shots from the outside, and they have to continue to be able to score off of the, off the Zags' miscues. Belmont trying to give us maybe the third upset of the day, looking for its first ever NCAA Women's Championship victory. 
A one-point lead in San Marcos. Aaron pass. Kinney. Nope. There's a second chance. And terrific offensive rebound. Allison Lully in the right spot. Well, credit Lully for running the floor with Kenny. A lot of people would just assume a make, but she stayed with it, which is why Belmont's got a second chance here. This is Wells. Tried to scoop it and was underneath the rim. Right, not a great angle. It doesn't feel like any stage is too big for the freshman. She became the first freshman to win the OVC Tournament MVP crown last week when they defeated UT Martin to punch their ticket to their fifth straight tournament. Joel Townsend, that's just a terrific head fake. I just think that's a better move. So poised, just calm and collected there. Little head fake, one dribble to create space and knocks it down. A senior from Okanagan, Washington, now with eight. Swish, Wells. Off the curl cut, it's Townsend with back-to-back -back buckets. And beyond that, great team execution by Gonzaga. And some confusion right there, that's a turnover. Well, great down screen, quick curl, catch and shoot by Townsend. Nothing but the bottom of the net. And these two are delivering us a competitive game today. They have met once before. That was in Vegas in November of 2017. Belmont, the winner of that one, by a final of 71 to 63. Down one, just started the second half. Wells left open, buries a three. Well, you can see the Townsend. offensive plan right now by Gonzaga. They're just trying to get Townsend going. Three possessions, and it's all been screens to get Jill Townsend a shot opportunity. Uses that shot fake well. Coming up nicely that time by Wells, who's grabbing her hand. She was one of the players to tumble a moment ago. And that three offline. Belmont pushing, and they slow. Conley Chin Wells has the mismatch. 18. Yeah, right to Chin. And how about the vision and the presence to the time the pass properly? Absolutely. Again, it's one thing to have a mismatch. It's another thing to be able to exploit it, and that's exactly what Belmont did. So now four assists for Wells, and she's picking up right where she left off in the opening half. Worth draws the foul. Well, Gonzaga has made some shots, but every time Belmont answers the freshman yet again, Wells with three. And then you see her feed. Conley Chen down low, taking advantage of the mismatch for two. It was such a chaotic first half. Belmont, after one, trailed by nine. They needed a spark. They went on that 12 nothing run, outscored Gonzaga by 10 in the second half to take the one-point lead to the break. And it's a two-point game again after the worth free throws. And so you're seeing Gonzaga just extend that into that 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court, just trying to disrupt the offensive flow of Belmont. In, no opening, back out. Wells, oh, behind the back, over the shoulder, and the bucket. Now Destiny Wells, dazzling right now. That may have been knocked away, no over and back. And this is what's so impressive by Belmont. 
this is a brand new defensive style for the Bruins this season that Mark Brooks adapted because of his two freshmen, Tootie Jones and Destiny Wells. You see how disruptive those two young ladies can be defensively. So he went away from the pack line, just kind of containment defense, a much more high pressure with those two freshmen. Well, don't turn your head with Jones right up on you. She snatches it. Well, if you're going to try to run Wells off the three, she's going to put it on the floor. If you rotate over to help, she's going to hit her post player on the weak side. Yet another no look, this time with the greatest degree of difficulty, knocks it down. And then her teammate, Tootie Jones, picks the pocket and goes the other way. You know, and I think that's just an illustration of the defense in general. You know, that was Kaylin Trong who had to back it out with seconds remaining on the shot clock, looking over at her coach, trying to run something. And Jones took it away, who, by the way, is 10th in the nation with three steals a game. That's her average. Belmont doing it again today. Two free throws on the way for Cam Browning. Well, this is what I love about Belmont. They're not trying to do more. They're not trying to do extra. This is truly how they have played all season long. And, and honestly, I think that's what you got to do when you get to the NCAA tournament. You can't change things. You got to give your kids confidence and comfort. And by doing that, you're seeing a Belmont team that's clicking on all cylinders at this point. You read my mind. I was just about to say it just feels like Belmont is living up to every bit of its reputation as to how it got here and how it just plowed through the OVC this year. Well, you got to go back to that month-long pause. And I asked Bart Brooks, I said, hey, what? So for two weeks, they just point production and scores just didn't make sense for the rest of the year. And he said, we weren't healthy. He said, as soon as we had our full Arsenal players, that's when we rattled off all of these wins in the manner that they have. And you're seeing a very healthy Belmont Bruins team right now. And in fact, it's 10 straight wins, 14 and one, their last 15, looking for their 11th straight. That would be their first ever NCAA Women's Championship victory. The lead is six, the largest of the day for the Bruins. Jones. Browning, hands on the ball, and a rebound to Jen Worth. That pass too far. Oh boy, the 12th Gonzaga turnover, and Belmont the aggressor. Down nine after one, Belmont up by six, past the midway mark third quarter. Christy, a moment ago before the timeout, what did you see on the latest Gonzaga possession? Well, Tootie Jones will get no credit in the stat book, but this turnover is all because of her defensive pressure. Tron needed one more dribble lower to truly have that straight line rule to feed her post player down low. Credit Kempton. Kempton had the seal, but because of the angle, could not get the ball and it sailed out of bound, and that's all because of Tootie Jones' ball pressure. At 12 turnovers now, significant for Gonzaga. Is that play almost a microcosm of how things have gone lately for Gonzaga? Well, Kevin, if you remember, I said that Belmont had to be able to create offense from their defense. And so, yes, those 12 turnovers that they forced, 18 points off of Gonzaga's turnovers. They give it right back. Three in the air. That one swirls through, and a big basket for Sierra Walker, her first points of the day. And that's a high percentage three because it went inside, forcing the defense to collapse. Sierra Walker spots up on the outside, knocks it down. Gonzaga made the round of 32 in the latest tournament two years ago, down three as the five seed, trailing the 12 seed Belmont in the Mercado region late in the third. Thanks in large part to Destiny Wells. And that ball just fortuitously bounces to her. Teammate cuts and the bucket. Walker can't hit the second straight three. 
you know, one thing about this up and down pace, and the Zags are completely comfortable getting up and down, but I feel like it's negating their size advantage. I'd love to see them get it down low, work that high low action a little bit versus just quick threes without their rebounders down there to, to get that second chance. And Zaga just 4 of 11 from deep. And Worth called for the offensive foul. Chin took the charge. Well, Conley Chin's done so much for this program this year. Here rotates over, and I thought this. She was not out of the restricted arc. That should not have been called a charge. Mm. Instead, it gives Belmont possession. Five-point lead for the Bruins. Wells, the star freshman, the OVC Freshman of the Year and OVC Tournament MVP. Couldn't find Bartley. Five to shoot. Jones gets it to him. Turn. That's way short. And a rebound down to O'Connor. Oh, excellent lead feed. And Leanne Worth had it knocked away out of bounds. The NCAA Men's Championship continues with the Sweet 16 in a few days. Second round action on, uh, ongoing today. The Gonzaga Men's Program defeating Oklahoma to advance to the Sweet 16 earlier. And Lisa Fortier's program here in San Marcos looking to come back from a deficit. Oh, the ball movement was there. The defensive shifting there as well. And two points on the drive for O'Connor. Again, great patience. They allow the ball to go side to side, and then they get that seam to attack down the middle. Great read by Abby O'Connor. There's Wells surveying. Drops it off. And Bartley got smothered. Ejim just makes things happen when she comes on the floor for Gonzaga. I, I really like this freshman. That's number 15 in the white. Jen Worth, the jab. There goes Ejim. And she draws the contact. Two free throws coming with less than a minute to go, third quarter. I think Ejim just gives them a little bit more explosiveness, just whether it's her rebounding or her first step to attack off the bounce, that time able to draw the foul. Now well, tune in Friday when the Men's Ice Hockey Championship gets underway in Bridgeport at 1 Eastern. It's our first matchup. It's on ESPN this Friday. It is championship season. The Bulldogs 0 of 2 at the line. Wells so dangerous around the rim. I think Wells is a great teaching uh, just a, a video lesson for every young player out there. You don't have to be faster. You need change of pace. And that is what Destiny Wells is doing so well to get by the length of Gonzaga here this afternoon. Well, Jones is not going to get possession here, but it does at least switch the possession arrow back to Belmont after the tie-up. Look at this little hesitation. And then is able to get the step on Walker. And then she knows how to use her body to get the shot off. Turns around, a little reverse kiss off the glass for the two. Bart Brooks said four years ago, I was at an AAU a tournament event. And in, in a, si a far corner of the gym I was at, a side court in Louisville, there's Destiny Wells. Once he saw her, he said, we, we've got to start recruiting her. He was blown away by what he saw. Destiny, it, the benefactor of growing up, as she detailed us, playing ball with her father, Larry, every day, teaching her moves, teaching her the fine elements of the game. Here's Gonzaga, and Ejim can't score it. 
with five seconds to go in the quarter, and the foul sends it back to Belmont. Wells, two seconds. What else does she have? The three. And there's a whistle. And three free throws are coming for Wells. Oh, critical foul on Ejim right here. Absolutely. You want to be able to distract. Oh. I mean, Kevin, I don't know about you. I didn't see anything. I mean, the only thing I can say is that the official saw the downward motion of the defender's hand. And but are they going to put some time back on the clock? That's the other question. A great question. In the meantime, an 86% free throw shooter to the line. So watch the clock. Could be a second. Yeah, I mean, at the time that Meadow Overstreet raised her hand, of course, I couldn't hear the whistle, but raise that hand, I agree with you, it's at least 0.9, if not one full second. So you'd think Gonzaga would have a possession, but of course, they'd be taking it out in their own backcourt. Belmont, Christy, has a chance to stretch this to maybe an eight-point lead. Uh, they're down nine after one. And Gonzaga looked lights out on the offensive end. Shot 75% from the field. And since then, Belmont has flipped that to at least a five-point lead, depending on what Wells does here. And there's the clock, 1.1 left in the quarter. championship game against UT Martin that clinched the tournament appearance for Belmont. Wells scored 32 to clinch the OVC tournament MVP crown as well. Eight point advantage for Belmont. The Bruins a quarter away from their first ever tournament win. Destiny Wells going off in San Marcos. Our Capital One rewarding performance, Destiny Wells, the Lakeland, Tennessee native with 23. And she's impacted all aspects of the floor. It's been her hesitation that I think has caused so much trouble for the defense. She rises, she evaluates, is patient. She's hit it from deep. She's taken it off the bounce. And obviously, she's had some remarkable no-look passes to her teammates here today. Hands down, the best player on the floor in this game today. Well, here's the great news. If you're at Gonzaga, you got a quarter ahead of you. They obviously have it in their DNA to come back. We saw that in the WCC championship. It's just really for them getting some stops and obviously slowing down on offense. I'd love to see them getting back to that ball movement. Look at a little high low or high post dribble penetration. Belmont out of the OVC from Nashville, Tennessee, down here in Texas, looking for the program's first ever tournament win. And Chin cleans up the boards. 10-point lead, largest of the game. Jones does that again. Now Townsend has to recover. Jones all over her, just vexing defense. Two on the timer. It stays with Gonzaga. Well, I hope Gonzaga is aware. Two seconds on the shot clock here. A quick catch and shoot. Plenty of time, even time for a dribble and shot here. 
Townsend inbound. Worth. And it's a shot. She falls. There was contact. It's a shot clock violation. I like the play call. Yeah, unfortunately, it just looks like she fell on her own there. I take it back. Not much contact. And Belmont, a chance to extend its double-digit lead. Kinney can't get the angle instead. Gallops into the, into the paint herself. Picks it up, hoists it up. Rebound to Leanne Worth. Jen Worth going to work, and a foul. She earns two free throws. Again, Jen Worth's not that typical back to the basket, just going to try to get physical with you. So I love on the catch, the reverse pivot face up, and then looks to attack off the bounce. And great job of getting that drop step down. I thought she traveled at first, but I agree there with the foul before she picked that foot up. Conference Player of the Year held to seven points, but with five boards, five assists. Coming up next over on ESPN, it's Michigan State and Iowa State at six, followed by Louisville taking on Maris, the 2-15 matchup, and then UCLA and Wyoming close out the first round on ESPN at 10 Eastern. As it started to become a trend, BYU an 11 seed earlier today defeated Rutgers. Wright State a 14 knocked out Arkansas just before we came on with our show here. And it's Belmont with an eight point cushion, but Gonzaga with a stop coming back the other way. Going back to Belmont. Tootie Jones with just incessant pressure. The freshman from Troy, Alabama. Well, I thought they were going to be able to hit the ball in here, but then Tootie Jones gets her hand on the sweep by Sierra Walker, and Walker knocks it out of bounds. Again, 10th in the nation with more than three steals per game. Plays like that make her one of, one of the better defenders in the OVC. Second team foul on Gonzaga. The Bulldogs winners of 21, uh, 22, pardon, of their last 23. They've lost just once since December. Down eight, first round NCAA Women's Championship. Kinney. And stays here after the Bartley miss. Lisa Fortier's team reached the round of 32 two years ago. Made an elite eight when she was an assistant back in 2011 and hoping it's not a quick stay or a one game stay in the tournament. Foul after the shot clock violation. Well, here's the one thing about Lisa Fortier. She is a great coach, not just a great recruiter, great developer of talent, both she and her staff. And, and you're seeing it. She's really unflappable, so calm. I think her team feeds off of that. There's still plenty of time in this game. So I'm sure there's no panic in Gonzaga right now. 6.55 to go. Townsend, that's good. Wells has it, 12 on the timer. Walker gives her some space, now the switch. 
Worth backs up. Wells offline. Oh, Judy Jones again. Goes up. Foul. The anticipation. Well, it seems like every time Gonzaga's had a high dribble, Tootie Jones has been there to disrupt or this time pick the pocket and then draws the foul on the other end. Four steals for Jones. And they haven't been by accident. These have been steals she's earned. Terrific on-ball defense. And Kevin, how many disruptions on top yep. of the steals? Countless for the freshman who was AAU teammates with Wells. And here they are, both in their freshman seasons, as impactful years as you could have in your rookie seasons. Plus 14 points off of turnovers. Strong hesitates. The leaner. Offline. Worth falling as she came down with the rebound and got pulled down. It's a foul on Belmont. Well, I love this by Gonzaga. You're seeing that extra effort on the glass now. It's not ever that first shot that can hurt you, but they are relentless on the glass. Tronk puts it off the glass, and then you just see Worth go up to try to create that rebound and gets the foul called. There goes Conley Chin, the junior, to the bench with four fouls. Oh, and a jump ball. Townsend pleading her case for a whistle. And Gonzaga has the possession arrow. It flips back to Belmont. A disruption right there. Townsend can't be denied of late. You just saw the true physical strength of Jill Townsend on that shot. Got bumped, did it matter, was still able to finish. The only Bulldog in double figures with 15. Five-point game again. Can Belmont take advantage of the switch and the mismatch down low? Trong on Browning. Well, starting to go to work. Step back, no. Here comes Walker. Winner to face Indiana in the round of 32. Midway mark, fourth quarter. Townsend sets the feet, rises. That one may have been blocked. And it's an offensive foul. Check that. A, a change in the moment. They'll say it's a block. And was the player in the restricted arm? Well, Kevin, there's a reason you were confused because the official changes the call. You were right. At first, she starts the motion charge, and then you see her change that to a block. Luli just did anguish. 4.55 to go. It's Belmont looking for its first ever tournament win. Has Gonzaga right on its heels. Oh, this will be a good one in San Marcos. Come on back. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? The NCAA Women's Championship continues. All games on the ESPN family of network, the Sweet 16, in five days. The championship, of course, on April 4th. Gonzaga came out swinging, had a nine-point lead after the first quarter. Look at how Belmont flipped the game, but just three points, and without a field goal over the last five minutes of this fourth quarter. First free throw is offline. Townsend converts the second. Four-point game. Belmont looking for its first ever tournament win. Oh. 
Conley Chin up top. That three is short. Browning. No, and a rebound to Townsend. And that is the fifth. Pardon me, it's the fourth foul on Cam Browning. And it sends Gonzaga to the free throw line for bonus free throws the rest of the way. But Kevin, to your point, that is Chen, Browning, and Bartley for Belmont, all with four fouls here with the rest of this game to go. The senior, Jill Townsend from Okanagan, Washington. All-conference first-team selection. Converts one out of two. Some foul trouble for the Bruins. Four on, as you said, Chin, Bartley, and Browning. Here's Belmont. It hasn't scored about six minutes. A field goal, that is. And a foul inside. I have a hard time with that because they're allowing that displacement on the other end. And yet, as on this end, they're calling that. Just be just be same on both ends. That's all I would ever ask for. Wells with 23. Back out. Bartley puts it up. That's strong. Gonzaga was down 10. Since on a 7 0 run. Oh, it was off of Townsend. The Zags have more time to execute there. Townsend was going to have that seal because she had the mismatch. I know she was claiming her arm got held, but just a second more, you have true straight line feed there for her to catch it, score. On this end for Belmont, Wells without any points this quarter, sitting on 23. Belmont one of 10 from the field this quarter. Wells, head fake, got it! Just mesmerizing. Changes speed, head fake. She basically does away with any kind of disadvantage she has from a size perspective by the ball movement. School record 25 points in an NCAA tournament game for Belmont. Kick out three, swish. Timeout, and Gonzaga back within two after the O'Connor triple. Timeout, Gonzaga. Two-point game, NCAA Women's Championship, down to the wire, Mercado Region, late fourth. I two, 314 to go in the fourth. And it's been Destiny Wells starting to pick up the scoring slack yet again. Little hesitation, gets the defender up in the air, and then goes underneath the length of Worth to kiss it off the glass for the two. A spectacular performance from this freshman from Lakeland, Tennessee. She has hypnotized defenders like that all afternoon. 25 points, 9 of 20 from the field, the six assists. And it looks Not like a single Abby turnover. Sorry, Kevin. It looks like Abby O'Connor might be trying to deny her the basketball, but she gets it anyway. She's on her. Less than three to go. Belmont by two. Look at a topple. The fifth seed, Gonzaga Bulldogs. Stays here, eight on the timer. And credit worth for just containing that dribble penetration that time of Wells. We've talked about how crafty she is with the ball in her hands, but she stayed low and prevented her from getting to the rim to score. Back to Kinney. And a whistle as a couple players went tumbling. That's Kaylee Trong, the Gonzaga player who hit the floor. And the foul, rather, is on Leanne Worth. One thing 
Gonzaga has to do is make sure they're finding the inbounder. We've seen this situation, Kenny, run in a couple of times and get the pass. Of note, Belmont gets a new 20. A lot of time to work with. Chin, that's number 20, setting the screen, playing with four fouls. Wells going back to work. Attacks, layup, rolls out. Worth with the board. Gonzaga a chance to maybe take a lead with less than 2.30 to go. Got her. Get her. Jill Worth to Leanne. Back out. Townsend. Six to shoot. Tron steps into it. And the rebound to Jones. I, I thought Worth to Worth was open there. I wanted to see a sister sister high low pass. Unfortunately, they missed it. It was late. Didn't get it to her in time. Six NCAA tournaments for Belmont. It's never won. Wells. Oh, difficult shot. And Worth with the defense. Townsend. Knocked out. Stays here is the call. And they're going to review that. Yep. 134. We are inside two minutes. The review to see who so was Kevin, last I touched back. by. I've talked a lot about Wells and how good she's been off the bounce, but worth these last couple of the possessions. The out of bounds is under a review. Great job containing that, and I have a feeling the ball is going to be going Belmont's way based on that review. Nothing that would suggest otherwise. This may be a quick look for McCall Murray, Kenny Nash, Meadow Overstreet, the officiating crew. <laughs> Belmont basketball. After review, the play will be uh, the ball will be Belmont. A two-point lead for the Bruins. They stumbled out of the gate, if you will, in the first quarter. But then outscored Gonzaga Christie by 10 in the second, by 7 in the third. The question, can they close it out now? 90 seconds to go. Well, it looks like O'Connor again is trying to deny Wells the ball. Into the hands of Destiny Wells with a game high 25 to Bartley. The tie up and a possession arrow favors Belmont. They have it, but just three seconds on the shot clock. I'll say this again you got to find the inbounder defensively. Kenny's been running in and getting that pass back a number of times already today. Kenny, Lob, Bartley, got to put it up, and score it. A minute to go. 12 seed Belmont with a four-point edge, looking to topple the five seed Gonzaga Bulldogs. Worth a long two, buries it, and a timeout, Lisa Fortier. Timeout, Gonzaga. Great execution on the inbound. It was supposed to be a little lob pass for a quick catch and shoot. But great job by Bartley to maintain composure and kiss it off the glass. But no panic because Worth comes down to the other end, pops out and knocks down the long jumper. <laughs> With 46.2 left, it is hard to watch. Now Belmont has possession. Of course, the possession arrow favors Gonzaga. The Bruins have all of their timeouts. Gonzaga with just two left. Both teams in the bonus. Coming up on ESPN2, we've got Texas A&M and Troy. That's at six. And then Texas and Bradley to close it out. Followed by Oregon, South Dakota. That's at 10. Three left. 
as part of the first round on ESPN2. We'll get you to that Texas A&M Troy game after this one. Beth Bowens, Renee Montgomery on the call for the 215 matchup in the Mercado. Two-point game, 45 seconds left. Winner to face Indiana in the round of 32. Wells waits, starts to plan. Eight seconds to work with. Right alley. Bartley rips it away. Score it! And one! The strength of Bartley to rip the ball away. Just remarkable by the freshman. I thought they were going to call jump ball right there because Jill Townsend had her tied up, but Bartley rips it through and then draws the foul to get the and one. The critical plays by the freshman for Belmont in this game. Reviewing the time to see if it ran after the foul call. Right now, the clock says 18.3. Regardless, if Belmont will have a chance to make it a five-point lead, it will stay a two-possession lead for Belmont with 18.3 left. So with Bar Bartley's a 68% free throw shooter. So first and foremost, you've got to box out. After review, we'll be putting 19.7 seconds back on the game clock. Welcome to San Marcos, the 5-12 matchup in the Mercado region. Belmont, the 12 seed, the OVC champs with a four-point advantage over the five-seed Gonzaga Bulldogs. A huge basket and foul for Madison Bartley, the freshman at the line, to perhaps extend the Bruins' lead to five with 19.7 with Christy thomas Gundy, Kevin Fitzgerald with you. Belmont had a 10-point lead earlier this half. Gonzaga cut it back to a two-point game moments ago. Now a five-point cushion for Belmont, looking for their first ever tournament win. And the Bulldogs have to go. 15 seconds. This is Townsend. 12 seconds. A lot of time being taken. Drive, pass, out of bounds. Belmont ball. 6.6 remaining. Bruins call a timeout. Oh, it's a double whammy. Used a lot of time and came away with no points. Absolutely. I thought they would just drive it straight, trying to get the quick layup. Obviously, a set play call. But to your point, Kevin, just a lot of time off the clock. And this is where you got to give Bart Brooks credit. He did not have Wells on the floor. One of his better defenders there for that defensive stand. Doing a little offense, defense gets her sub back in. Now they have the ball back. Destiny Wells, the freshman from Lakeland, Tennessee, has been spectacular. Just so patient. Probes against that defense. If they come at her, she hits her teammates. So many no-look passes today. Again, the Prados highest degree of difficulty was the one over the shoulder. But she doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Just reads the defense so well. Knows how to use her size to her advantage. Tons of ball fakes. Great change of pace with the dribble. This young lady's been special. On the biggest stage, 25 today. Belmont 6.6 .6 away from a program first. Gonzaga must foul. 5.1, that's where the clock lands. And it's Jones heading to the free throw line. 
Bart Brooks in his fourth season at Belmont. He has led this program to the NCAA Women's Championship all four years. They've yet to win a game. 5.1 away. One more, and it seals it. Seven-point lead. Gonzaga uses a timeout. 5.1 left. Christie, Belmont, winners of 10 straight. One of the hottest teams in the country. And Destiny Wells, not just the 25 points today, the 32 in the OVC championship game to send Belmont to Texas. Well, you got to believe this young lady's going to play her best ball on the biggest stage. And that's what we've seen in the OVC championship again here this afternoon. And, and I'll be the first to admit, I was wondering how the freshman would perform against the veteran, veteran play of Gonzaga against their length. And this young lady's just put on a show. So impressed with Destiny Wells here today. And they can start to sense it. Almost a footnote here to the three-point line. Worth misses with .9. That'll just be a footnote. It's a first for Belmont. Their first ever tournament win. 